More than 25 years after he sent the Seinfeld gang to jail in the sitcom's much-hated series finale, Larry David exonerated himself, both literally and figuratively, in the final moments of Curb Your Enthusiasm. The April 7th series finale, which wrapped 12 seasons and 24 years of the unscripted HBO comedy, sees Larry on trial for accidentally breaking a Georgia voting law. In the finale, much like the last episode of Seinfeld, Larry sits on trial as rivals from his past, like Mocha Joe and Mr. Takahashi, serve as character witnesses for the prosecution, recounting every bad deed Larry has done. Larry is found guilty and winds up in a cell, but while the Seinfeld crew remained in jail, Larry ultimately walks free, thanks to a legal caveat exploited by his old pal Jerry Seinfeld. As they prance out of the jailhouse, Larry has a meta-revelation. Oh my god! This is how we should have ended the finale this was not the plan when we were even starting season 12. We knew that we were starting with Georgia and that idiotic law, and when you start that way, it feels like a trial is maybe in the offing. But we weren't even settled on a trial. Honestly, we were writing episodes and talking about a story where Larry gets involved with a kid who's done something wrong, like throwing a ball at his head, and the mom is trying to teach him a lesson and Larry doesn't want to be a part of the lesson. As we were acting that out, Larry says, I'm 76 years old and I've never learned a lesson in my life. As we were joking about that, we realized that's how we do this. We tell everyone that Larry has never learned a lesson in his life. And then we go on trial like the Seinfeld finale and we just own it. We're gonna run back into that burning building. And if you didn't like it, tough. Oftentimes we blur the lines between real Larry and TV Larry. Lots of times, TV Larry does things that real Larry would never do or always wanted to do. But both Larrys have never learned a lesson. That's what I love about this finale. Larry did what he thought was funny. And then he did it again. In season 12, TV Larry gets a lot of grief for the Seinfeld finale. Is the backlash to that episode something that bothers him in real life? Chaffer, no. One of the best things about Larry is that he's really never once worried about other people and their thoughts. That's why the show is so good. If we think it's funny, then we do it. We went back in and sort of peppered those scenes where Larry is ribbed about the Seinfeld finale into the season once we knew what we were going to do for the end. What did you make of the Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger sending Larry David a letter, lightly scolding him over the voting law storyline? He wrote, in part, we'd like to congratulate you on becoming the first, and to our knowledge, only person arrested for distributing water bottles to voters within 150 feet of a polling station. Schaefer, the letter is really funny we were planning on returning to it, but it's been manufactured that the Seinfeld people did something bad and went to jail, and Larry did something good and went to jail. That relationship didn't exist in our heads. It's something people were looking at after the fact, but it was never intended or thought about. Larry famously alluded to every season of Curb, potentially being its last. But could you speak to the last few days on set, and whether there was a heightened sense of finality? Susie Essman. The last scene that we shot was the actual last scene, not counting reshoots. That was the only time, in the plane, where I really felt, this is it. I didn't feel it leading up to it at all. We were all hyper aware on the last day of shooting that this was the last scene of the last season of the series. We all spoke about it. There were a lot of hugs and a lot of I love yous. We're not really that type, but we went there. Even Larry was a little choked up about the end. Schaefer, I wouldn't say that. Esmin, he wasn't choked up. I think he was quite aware of it. From the very beginning, this was Larry's creation, and he was letting go of it. But he compartmentalizes. He has his own way of dealing with this stuff. I didn't feel a tremendous sense from him on the last day, until the very end, when he kind of slinked away and was quiet. He wanted to not acknowledge it and get out of there. A post shared by Curb Your Enthusiasm, at Curbio Your Enthusiasm, Schaefer, to be fair, we had another eight months of editing to do. We weren't done at all. We were just beginning the third phase. You've got the writing, the shooting, and then the editing. So we had a lot of work to do. Esman, I would write to Jeff and Larry while they were editing and tell them I miss them and they were like, we don't miss you Schaefer. Yeah, I just watched you speak for 45 minutes and take after take after take. Susie, believe me, I see you in my dreams I'm sure we'll still be in touch. But knowing Larry, he'll find an outlet in some other form for all of those things percolating in his head. For Jeff, too. 
Jeff's way younger than all of us. He's the baby in the family. So I'm excited to see what he's going to do next. Schaefer. But also, I'm sitting here in my office. Larry's office is right over there. Larry's going to walk in, and he's going to complain about something, and then we're going to talk about it. Just like we've done for decades. Until man can step outside of his house and not be annoyed by fellow man. I think he's going to keep working. Jeff, you've been a shepherd for younger voices in comedy, especially with Dave, which was successful for FX and Hulu. Do you anticipate that Larry will want to have more of a behind-the-scenes hand in helping shape those younger voices in comedy? Schaefer, I think Larry is still a very young voice in comedy. People always say Curb is about Larry's life. That's wrong. Curb is about Larry's ideas. And he still has ideas. He is still going out and interacting with the west side of Los Angeles, which by the way is rife with terrible people. It's an evergreen business.